Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. All the buzz about some snow flurries kind of tells you how bad the snow drought has been. I'm looking at it right now, 1,039 days, including today, with no snow in Charlotte. By far the longest snow drought in our city's history. And while yes, there could be some flurries tonight, it will have zero impact on your life. It will not impact roads. It will not cause anything to be canceled. It is not a big deal, but it could end our snow drought. So that's why we're talking about it. And it's been so long. I mean, it's been crazy how long it's been. So where is our potential snow flurry activity coming from? You could see it upstream. I wanted to throw the temperatures on here too, because it's bone chilling cold, by far the coldest air of the season. We've had four straight mornings with a freeze. Haven't done that since January. So it's been a while since we've seen consistent cold like this. And so I'm gonna turn off the, uh, the surface observations and we'll focus on our snow chance because there it is. It doesn't look like much. It's a little disturbance. Um, it's mostly in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. So there it is. It's diving to the southeast. Not the greatest setup. Typically northwest flow for us. Good news for the mountains. Mountains will get some snow. We could see several inches of snow near the Tennessee line. Maybe three to five inches of fluffed up snow in places like Beach, Sugar Mountain, Roan Mountain, uh, Mount Mitchell, up towards Mount Rogers. But east of the mountains, northwest flow is not great. The reason it's not great is when things come out of the northwest, out of the mountains, the air sinks and it dries out. It's already bone dry here now. So when this system gets here, it's going to have very little moisture. It is going to be lacking moisture. It will have plenty of cold air, plenty of upper level support, but no moisture. And we'll talk more about that here as the disturbance heads down. So let's look at a couple things. This is what we call vorticity. It's essentially spin in the atmosphere in the mid-levels. And this drives a lot of weather. And you see that big bright area right there. That's our disturbance. Notice it diving down to the southeast. And so we have plenty of energy. This is a great setup for, you know, in the summer or spring, this would be a good setup for severe weather or pop-up thunderstorms. This is a good setup for at least a chance of snow. The problem is there's no moisture coming in this. So this is a bone dry setup. How dry is it? Well, below this, we're going to see very dry air. And I'm going to show you something I don't often show you. This is a little inside baseball, or in this case, inside weather. This is an atmospheric sounding at about midnight tonight. So the ground is down here and these numbers are in thousands of feet. So 25,000 feet is up here, 10,000 to 5,000 is right here. There's some moisture. The two lines come together. The green line is a dew point. The red is the, is the temperature. When they're close together, that means things are close to 100% saturated. So notice there's moisture at that level, five to 10,000 feet, but below it, the lines separate, which means there's dry air. So if it does snow, the snow could fall from five to 10,000 feet. The problem is as it falls down, it would be evaporating. Now there's a technical term for that meteorologically, it's called sublimation. It's when you take a solid and it goes straight to a gas. So it's like evaporation for water, but for this case, it's ice or snow. So it's basically gonna go away a lot of it. So it's gonna eat up a lot of our potential for snow. And so that's not a real good setup to get snow to the ground. And here's a, a, a kind of a cross section. You see the moisture right here. I'm gonna move this over so it's easier to see. Um, and there's a lot going on here, but you see this moisture, this is around, uh, five to 10,000 feet, but below it, there's no moisture at all. See how dry it is, there's no greens. That means below about 4,000 feet, the air is bone dry. And that means a lot of this dries up. So what could it look like as it moves down from the Northwest? So it's overnight tonight. And again, the timing of this is probably closer to midnight to three or four in the morning. That's why I said a lot of you will likely sleep through this, but there it is right there, a little burst of flurries. <laughs> this is at 2 a.m. to be precise on our short range guidance. So two o'clock in the morning, um, from Greensboro to Charlotte, there's a little area of flurries or snow showers. Now, again, this is what the radar will look like, but remember, a lot of this is drying up before it reaches the ground. So while it might look cool on the radar and your app on your phone is saying it's snowing, it might not actually be reaching the ground because below that cloud layer, it's too dry. So that's the biggest uh, obstacle to getting snow to the ground is right there. And you can see through about, um, about four in the morning, there's that burst of snow moving off to the southeast. Now, some models are painting about a tenth of an inch, I think that's overdone because of the evaporation, but certainly a trace is doable. In fact, the blend of models has completely whiffed on this and now it's there's no snow at all. I remember yesterday I showed that the models kind of all together, not one single model. I like losing, using blends, that it shows no accumulating snow at all. So in the end of this, the, the, the story for this is, this is not gonna be a big deal. It's not gonna be, you're not gonna wake up to a winter wonderland. Um, you're not going to see this. Most of you will sleep through this. It will not cause any cancellations or delays, or it shouldn't, honestly. But it is our first snow in over 1,040 days. 
So if we make it to tomorrow, that would be 1,040 days since we've seen snow of any kind. I'm not talking accumulation, just a trace. So for that reason alone, it's something that I'm going to be talking about. So I'll show you another view of this a little close up just to give you an idea on what this could look like. All right, so just another perspective on this little wave moving down. Do you see it coming down? Again, this will all be snow. I don't know why the guidance here, this, this is looking like grain, but it's going to be all snow. You see it moving into the mountains this evening and then crossing over the Piedmont. And then here we are, you know, this is around 11 o'clock. So maybe the first snow flurries, if we're going to get some, could happen 11. It's really after midnight into the wee hours of the morning. This is 2 o'clock in the morning. You see that little burst moving through. And then off to the southeast about 3 or 4 in the morning. So that's a look. It's not a huge deal. But yes, there is the potential for snow flurries overnight. 99% of you will sleep through this unless you stay up all night and stare at a light and see some flurries fall. It honestly is not a big deal, but I will post updates throughout tonight and early tomorrow. And if you get pictures or video, send them in. I'd love to share them with everybody.